Hey, everybody, we are going to talk about a company that John Quast, who's joining me, and I both think could be on the verge of kind of a big transformation. Um, we'll get right into what it is in just a second. Before we do, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. You get the top 10 stocks to buy right now from The Motley Fool. It's a great way to support this work we're doing on YouTube. Again, that is fool.com slash Frankel. So, John, I'm sure you've seen in the news lately the, the Starbucks CEO shakeup. Um, you know, they, they took Chipotle CEO. Uh, Chipotle stock went down. Starbucks stock went up. Leadership shifts like leadership shakeups like that are not uncommon. Um, Disney just brought Bob Iger back recently. There's, you know. But usually it's just the CEO that gets gets the boot. With PayPal, they pretty much fired everybody. Um, you know, they, they hired a new CEO last September, Alex Chris. Uh, he was an Intuit executive. You know, makes a lot of sense. He worked on QuickBooks, the payment platforms, things like that. He was hired last September, and he is the newest executive, or I'm sorry, he is the longest tenured executive at PayPal right now. Everyone in the C-suite, and in the on the senior leadership team even is newer than that, and ju- and the, there was a pretty impressive collection of hires. So I just want to name a few. I'm not going to spend the whole video. I could spend the whole video talking about all their, the hires they've done, uh, but I won't. Um, the new president of global markets, formerly was chief growth officer at Pfizer, very big company. Uh, their new CFO was the global CFO at Ernst and Young, the massive firm. Um, their uh, executive vice presidents. One of them was the former leader of QuickBooks Money and was formerly SoFi's CEO. Uh, the other EVP was formerly Verizon's chief marketing officer for nine years. Um, the chief enterprise service officer was formerly the chief risk officer at Citigroup. That's a you know pretty big hire. Um, so those are just five examples. There, there's about a dozen of them. Uh, people they've brought in to kind of, and the reason they've brought people in, and I, I kind of want to get your thoughts on this too. In 2021, the CEO at the time said, "We're going to." They were about 400 billion, 400 million users. We're going to get to 750 in the next few years. Then we're going to get to a billion, and it's just going to go up from there. And what happened? The growth immediately stagnated around that 400 million mark, uh, and everything he said looked really unbelievable and unrealistic at that point. They were making a lot of disjointed moves. You probably remember when they were going to acquire Pinterest for for $70 a share. At one point, no one really knew why. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people forgot about that. Um, So a whole new leadership team was brought in to say, okay, you have 400 and and X million loyal users. Grow the business. Make more money. Um, One, do you think that they made the right move by bringing in all this new leadership? And two, just what do you, why do you think that this is a good value right now? To your first question, I think that Alex Chris was a fantastic hire for them, given his experience with what he was doing and into it. I think that they brought in the person with the right background for the job, at the very least. I also think that if you're going to bring in a new CEO and say, we want you to take our business to the next level, you've got to give him the freedom to make drastic moves if he feels like he should make drastic moves. And that's what they did, letting him shake up the entire C-suite. And so I think that was the the right move for the company, definitely. And as far as the value goes, I think that you bring up a very good point about the growth stagnating. And you brought up the user growth. But one of the things that is really, really interesting, if you look at PayPal over the last three years, the revenue has continued to climb. Transactions have continued to climb. But if you look at the gross profit, completely flat. If you look at the free cash flow, flat. And that is really interesting over this longer time frame that you can look at. You can see the revenue continuing to go up, but those profitability metrics flatlining. And so what does that mean? It means that your margins are going down. You are adding top line, but you're not adding anything to the bottom line. And that's a problem. Yeah, it, payment processing has kind of become very commoditized in terms of in, in the sense that there's very little pricing power. 
the gradual direction of fees in all forms of financial services is downward. Um, think about how much it cost you to trade a stock 20 years ago and how much, it, you know, it, it's been a gradual downward, downward trajectory. Uh, same with banking fees for that matter. So the, the take rate that PayPal gets from its transactions is, is been under pressure. And like you said, they've, they've been growing just, for example, over the past year, pay, uh, total payment volumes up 11% year over year. Um, you know, free cash flow was a pleasant surprise in the most recent quarter, but you're right up until then, it's really been very stagnant. Um, so new management has been focusing on, you know, the user growth has been flat, but management's done a great job on focusing on the most engaged of those 430 million members um, to, and really kind of working on efficiency. They, you know, a few rounds of layoffs, I believe there were. Um, operating margins are up nicely. But I, and I like some of the things that they're doing. Um, you know, it, you can we can all look up the earnings multiple. It trades for, I think, 12 or 13 times forward earnings right now. Um, but so is this a business that is just a pure value play? Or do you see avenues for growth ahead? And I can, I can name some of the things that I'm excited about. But I, I want to, I'm curious as to what you see is like, if you hold PayPal for the next five years, what's the company going to look like then? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic question and one that should be asked. I think it's a combination of both. I don't think that this is a company that's going to melt your face off with growth. But at the same time, I thought that it was fascinating. And I'm kicking myself because I actually gave up on PayPal earlier this year. I held it from the time it was spun out from eBay until earlier this year. I finally gave up on it. And shortly thereafter, they announced advertising as one of the main things that they're going to be focused on. And when you think about this company, uh, 222 million monthly active users, 60.9 transactions uh, per month per user. That's twice a day that somebody is checking out PayPal services. So when you think about that from an advertising perspective, twice a day, they're interacting with your program. That's an opportunity for an ad. And this is something that can scale quite quickly, I think. And they hired over the guy who architect, the architect for Uber's advertising business, right? Brought him in. There's another impressive hire for you. That is something that can be accretive to the earnings very quickly. And so when you think about what the stat that you mentioned, uh, like 13 times forward earnings, I believe that they trade it currently 11 times their current free cash flow, somewhere in that ballpark. Advertising is gravy. And so, man, that's something that can really boost those earnings. And what are they using those earnings for nowadays? A few years ago, blowing $4 billion on honey. Good luck even finding honey in the documentation anymore as a mention. Like, it's not even there, existent. So that's a $4 billion down the toilet. Well, now all of a sudden, using that for share repurchases, sh the share count is down. I believe 12% over the last two and a half years or so. Those repurchases are actually reducing the share count now. So I think it's a combination there. There are moves such as advertising that can boost that earnings potential. And then coupling that with a cheap stock with share repurchases, you can drive down the share count and boost the earnings per share. So I think a combination of that makes us an intriguing value play. Yeah, no, I I always approach it with a healthy level of skepticism um, with with new, completely new, you know, revenue streams. Uh, we're going to build an advertising platform has been a pretty popular thing among a lot of companies the past year or so. Uh, Mercado Libre is another one that I follow that has said the exact same words. Um, and I mean, you're right. They, they have a lot of opportunities to put ads in front of the right people. They have a lot of consumer data. They know where people are spending money. That's a very big competitive advantage in advertising. Yeah. Um, Facebook, or like, for example, I, just to name another advertising business, you know, they know what people are looking at or looking for. They don't know what people are actually spending money on to the extent that PayPal does. So that's a nice little competitive advantage. Um, I love the buybacks they're doing. Um, they're, they're pretty much saying, Wall Street, you're wrong. We are not an 11 times earnings stock. We're going to take advantage of this. They're spending 100% of their free free cash flow on buybacks right now, uh, more or less. Um, and they can do that because they have a little over $18 billion in cash in, in, on the balance sheet. So they what do they need their free cash flow for? 
Um, and by the way, I'd much rather them have wasted four four billion dollars on honey and learned the lesson than the you know forty billion or whatever they were going to spend on Pinterest. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's an easier lesson to learn, I guess. Um, as a Pinterest shareholder, I was you know rooting for the deal. But, um, and then today, just just today, uh, while we're recording this, they announced that uh, they're expanding their partnership with Adyen. Um, you know, very. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Um, they are the fintech. If you have, if you remember when eBay ditched PayPal as their primary payment provider, that was in favor of Adyen. Um, they have eBay. They have their Uber's payment processor, their Microsoft's payment processor, and they're going to offer Fastlane by PayPal to its U.S. enterprise clients. Um, it's a recently developed uh, new checkout product by PayPal. Supposedly, their stat is it reduces checkout time by thirty-two percent. Um, it, it's designed to eliminate the clunkiness of online checkout um, and, and convert better. So uh, that could, you know, partnership revenue is one way I could see. Uh, that's really where PayPal should go. I mean, advertising is a form of partnership revenue um, when you break it down. And, you know, if your product or if your platform is seen by, you know, 430 million people on, on at least a monthly basis, that's a lot of opportunities to say, hey, we have this engaged and loyal user base. Let's put your product in front of it. Or let's put your, you know, so there's a lot of different ways they could take this. Um, Alex Chris has referred to 2024 as a transition year. So I'm kind of just taking everything that goes on right now with like, okay, let's give them some time to get get this team in place and, and see how things start to develop. Um, in the next year or two, I want to see some real signs of growth and not just revenue. I want to see actual profit growth um but i I'm, I'm happy with the direction it's heading how about you well the the trend is already there matt and this is another reason why i'm kicking myself right now you mentioned a transition year and that's a language that they're using and so as i kind of listen to that thinking all right i've been really patient here and now it's a transition year so that's corporate speak for <laughs> this year ain't going to be good and so i kind of just gave up on it. You mentioned the partnership with Uber and things like that. I think a lot of people don't realize that, that it's behind the scenes on a lot of these um, apps as unbranded checkout, right? And that is the thing that's been the margin that's been trending downwards. All of a sudden in the most recent quarter, that transaction margin going up. And so maybe this higher margin revenue is starting to manifest earlier than myself. It, but other investors, I'm sure, would have thought. And so that's already a good step in the right direction after years of slowly declining. Now, all of a sudden, we've seen a small uptick. And I, I would credit new management with that. Yeah, I've I've called PayPal my top stock to buy of 2024. And um, I, I'd stand by that, even, even though it's gone up a little bit recently. Um, John, thanks for joining me. It's been a great discussion. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed that. Leave me some questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them individually. Thanks for watching. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than four times, so go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 650% as of April 16th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 148% as of April 16th, 2024.